to begin. I kindly entreat all of us to put our phones on silent or flight mode. I also remind you not to step on the kneelers. Thank you. We shall now all rise for the processional hymn, hymn 10, on page 4 of the brochure. We shall all rise for the procession. And our processional hymn is hymn number 10, on page 4 of the program.
morning to all of you. Please be seated. On behalf of His Grace, the Most Reverend John Bonaventure Kofi, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, on behalf of His Grace, Most Reverend Charles Gilbert Pomabaco, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Cape Coast, I wish to welcome all of you, Your Excellencies, the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishops and Bishops of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. I also wish to welcome Most Reverend Toto, the Anglican Bishop of Accra. I wish to welcome the Vicars General, some of whom are representing the bishops and archbishops. I wish to welcome the representative of the Bishop of Techiman, who is here with us. I wish to welcome all the priests and religious, especially from Kufuridia Diocese, the Archdiocese of Cape Coast, who are here with us. I wish to welcome the honorable members representing the government here present. I wish to welcome all of you mourners gathered here to sympathize with the Buckle family, to pray with them, and to pray that the soul of our mother and grandmother, Mrs. Beatrice Abba Buckle, will be received in paradise. Again, on behalf of the Archbishop of Cape Coast, Archbishop Charles Gabriel Pamabocco, I, I wish to welcome my dear priests from various dioceses, religious sisters, and then finally, on behalf of the Archbishop of Accra, and priests, religious, and laity of the Archdiocese of Accra, I wish to express sincere sympathies to the Boko family. Ohanyapo, Wanshezen. I will now ask the Emeritus Archbishop of Cape Coast, Most Reverend Matthias Inketia, to preside over this solemn mass. Shall we now please stand? Thank you. So let us start in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. So, with the greatest respect, allow me to address you all as brothers and sisters, because that is who we are. So, brothers and sisters, we gather here in this cathedral this morning as it is obvious because of the home call of our mother, grandmother, sister and all to the heavenly table. He has been called to join her, her maker, her father, her God. And at a time like this we recall the welcoming and consoling words of Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life. He says, I am going to prepare a place for you in my father's house, where there are many mansions, and I shall come back for you, so that where I am, you also will be there. And that is homecoming for believers who die in the Lord. Our mother believed this. She was a believer. So we are celebrating this Eucharist to thank God for her life given to her family, given to the church, and also given to the country as a gift. And so we pray that what she ardently believed in 
and devo devotedly lived for will be re realized for her in heaven. We pray for the bereaved family and indeed for all of us who grieve for her for consolation. We pray for ourselves as well to remember that we shall also one day be called to give account of our life in death that should make us lead fruitful lives in righteousness because let us remember it is appointed unto man to die and after death judgment Hebrews 9:27. so let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist which is the proclamation of the Lord Jesus until he comes a death that has destroyed our death and restored our life let us do that by calling to mind our sins acknowledging our sinfulness and ask for pardon from them let us now together confess our sins to God I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Father, our faith professes that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your maidservant Beatrice, who has fallen asleep in Christ Jesus, your Son, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord of the dead and the living. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So each of us shall give account of himself to God. The word of the Lord. My soul is longing for your peace, near to you, my God. My soul is longing for your peace, near to you, my God. Lord, you know that my heart is not proud. And my eyes are not lifted from the earth. My soul is longing for your peace. Yes, for you, my Lord. Lofty thoughts have never filled my mind. Far beyond my sight, all ambitious deeds. My soul is longing for your peace, yes, to you, my Lord. In your peace I have maintained my soul. I have kept my heart in your quiet As a child rest on his mother's knee, so I place my soul in your loving care. My soul is longing for your peace, yet to you, my Lord. Israel, put all your hope in God. Your trust in him now and evermore. My soul is longing for your peace. Yet to you, my Lord. My soul is longing for your peace. Near to you, my God. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their deeds go with them. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of heaven's glory. Praise 
Secundum Ioane At that time Jesus said to his disciples let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Verbum Domini My Lord and Bishops and Bishops, Your Excellency the Apostolic Nuncio, members of government here present, clergy and religious, and if I may address all of you simply as brothers and sisters in Christ, permit me on your behalf to express once again our deepest condolences to his grace, most reverend Charles Gabriel Palmabacco, and to all his brothers and sisters, indeed to the entire Anubil, Bacle and allied families on the loss of your mother and ours, a grandmother, parishioner, and friend, the late Mrs. 
Beatrice Abba Bacow, name Ne Anobel. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. I wish to thank you, Archbishop Bacow, and indeed all your sisters and brothers, for inviting me to preach the homily at this funeral mass of your mother. This is no small honor. But I want to believe that the reason is quite simple. That I too am one of the many priests who have had the privilege of serving our beloved mother as a parochial vicar here at her parish, the Holy Spirit Cathedral. And this modest decision of yours is very much in sync with Mama's persona, a very simple person of very few words. And if I may borrow the words of Mawina, her granddaughter, a perfect lady, but with nothing in her demeanor or in her mannerisms to betray that she was the mother of an archbishop. I wouldn't be surprised that there were people in this cathedral where she was for about 50 years, who had no idea that she was the mother of the Archbishop. Mama's passing away took all of us by surprise. And that is not to say that we are not aware that at 95, she was in the twilight of her life. But nothing in her peaceful and calm disposition could have prepared us to say goodbye so quickly. She fell ill and was taken to the hospital like we expect of any elderly person. And as Auntie Sissy puts it, we all thought it was going to be one of those regular visits to the hospital. Alas, Mama slipped out of our hands so gently, in the same way she was accustomed to all her life. Her inobtrusive personality would not even permit her to call attention to herself in the final moments of her life. Mama will be sorely missed by you, Archbishop, and all of you, her children and grandchildren. As our people say, a huge tree has indeed fallen. But that is the very reason why we need to turn to the scriptures for solace and for understanding in the darkness of the situation. Where shall we find a word to comfort you, dear family, in this sorrow? The prophet in Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 says, When thy words came, I ached them, and thy words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah 15, 16. And that is why I am consoled that you, the family, have chosen these passages of scripture which, which we have just heard read. The first reading taken from the letter to the Romans, chapter 14, 7 to 9, is the passage in which the Apostle Paul dwells on the question of Christian death and utters those immortal words, none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. This is what undergirds our firm belief that Mama, who lived her entire life in the Lord and died in Him, belongs to the same Lord, whether alive or dead. That said, I would like us to turn our attention to the gospel reading on which I seek to dwell at some length in this homily. The passage which we read from John chapter 14 verses 1 to 6 is part of the farewell discourse of Jesus which begins at the Last Supper in John chapter 13 and extends through John chapter 17. Any farewell discourse whether it is that of a parent advising a son who is about to travel abroad, or of a child woken up at dawn by his parents before she leaves the boarding school, I'm sure you have experience of that, 
or of the last wishes of a parent to her children as she lies on her deathbed. Every farewell discourse is one which is to be cherished and remembered. And so is the discourse in John chapter 14. But what exactly are the contents of the farewell discourse in John 14, 1 to 6? I should like to suggest that Jesus tells his disciples three important things in this passage. First, Jesus tells his disciples where he is going. He is going to his father's house where there are many dwellings. Second, Jesus tells them why he is going. He is going to prepare a place for them so that where I am, you also may be. Third, he tells his disciples how they can also come to the Father. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It is on these three dimensions of Jesus' farewell message, the where, the why, and the how, that I invite you to meditate with me this morning. Beloved, the first thing that Jesus tells his disciples is where he is going. And he indicates to them, he indicates this to them when he says, In my father's house there are many dwellings. And I am going there to prepare a place for you. In fact, I am sure you are familiar with a version which reads, In my father's house there are many mansions. I have to admit that this particular text in John chapter 14 verse 2 has always baffled me since my youth. It never seemed clear to me how there could be mansions in a house. But in fact, the Greek word that is used for dwellings or otherwise mansions is the word mone. And what does that mean? The word has to do with a place where you willingly remain, where you abide, an abode, a place of rest, of comfort. It is that place where your landlord is not knocking at your door for rent at 4 a.m. Beloved, you'll recall that in John chapter 15, Jesus speaks about the vine and the branches. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This is John 15, 5. When Jesus speaks of abiding in me, it is in fact the same word mone in its verbal form, which is used to express that intimate indwelling which bears abundant fruit. The Father's house is more than just an edifice. It is a home. A place of intense intimacy. This is a place where we can abide permanently without ever fearing separation from the Father. Jesus' promise to his disciples is that anyone, anyone who through baptism has become a son or a daughter of the Father has the privilege of calling the Father's house home, an abode. Monet, a dwelling. As the psalmist puts it so eminently in Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, My refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Psalm 91, 1 and 2. But this dwelling place, this abode, is not just a place where we shall be, be at home with the Father. It is according to our faith also 
the place where we shall be united with all the other children of the father in one big family mama's leaving us is a return to the father but it's also a reunion with our with all our faithful departed and i can only imagine what joy when after 36 years she is finally reunited with her beloved husband and our father sir ebenezer charles palmer Paco, of blessed memory beloved the second dimension of jesus's farewell discourse is to tell the disciples why he is leaving he says i'm going to prepare a place for you and when i come again i will take you to that place so that where i am you also will be the reason why jesus is leaving is to prepare a place for us of course the immediate thing that comes to mind is to presume that this place which jesus is talking about is the same dwelling place we've just spoken about or well, that could very well be the case but i urge that we take a closer look beloved you will recall that the book of acts of the apostles is very specific about the place where jesus went after his ascension in Acts chapter 7, 55 and 56, when the deacon Stephen was being stoned to death, Luke recounts, but he, Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing at the right hand of god Acts 7 55 and 56. we know that the right hand in the hebrew worldview had to do with a place of authority and of power in fact the person who sat at the right hand was the heir or the one who had the right of succession you will equally recall the evangelist mark's account of the episode of how James and John, the sons of Zebedee, requested of Jesus to sit at his left and right when he entered into his kingdom. Jesus' words were instructive. He said, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left, is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared mark 10 30 39 to 40. beloved in christ i wish to suggest that the place where jesus has gone to prepare is the same place where he is seated at the right hand of the father indeed his words are quite clear i am going to prepare a place for you and i will come again to take you to myself so that where i am you also may be what is it that qualifies a person to sit on the right of the father in matthew's gospel chapter 25 the evangelist provides the answer he says when the son of man comes in glory he will say to those on his right come you blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world for i was hungry and you gave me food i was thirsty and you gave me drink i was a stranger and you welcomed me i was naked and you clothed me i was sick and you visited me i was in prison and you came to me matthew 25 35 and 36. yes indeed jesus has gone to the father's house where there are many dwellings but the reason why he has gone to prepare a place 
is that that we might be where he himself is that place however is the place reserved for those who have lived a life of charity a life of self-giving a life of consideration for the poor and oppressed the place that is prepared for those who have poured out their lives as a gift for others beloved I have been having little conversations with Auntie Sissy with whom mama spent most of her final years and she said something which struck a chord deep down inside of me she said there is one thing I remember of mama growing up she was constantly either cooking or washing or taking care of one or the other of us who was sick mama spent all her life working in silence pouring forth her life for her children and she would do all of this in a spirit of constant prayer singing her favorite hymns as she went along I think mama has spent her life doing ordinary things extraordinarily well I want to suggest on the light on a lighter note your excellency apostolic nuncio that we should go and look for the cooking pot in which mama used to cook for 12 children and preserve it as a relic I come to the third aspect of Jesus's farewell message to his disciples which answers the question how we can come to the father's house Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me there is one little detail which John the evangelist slips into the text an otherwise harmless detail in which we are told that it was Thomas who asked the question and he said Lord we do not know where you are going how can we know the way why exactly John seeks to volunteer this rather otherwise superfluous piece of information we are not quite sure but beloved Thomas himself is a very interesting character among the disciples in fact three times in the gospel according to John his name is mentioned as Thomas also called Didymus which means the twin now we know the brother of Peter is Andrew we also know that the brother of James is John but who exactly is the twin brother or sister of Thomas we are never told but knowing the gospel according to John and his penchant for symbolism it is not impossible that the name Didymus or twin is only figurative perhaps it describes the type of person Thomas was and we remember him the doubting apostle an oxymoron Thomas is a double character one who was an apostle supposed to be filled with faith but at the same time a doubter I don't want to refer to the twins that we have in mama's own family But Jesus perhaps addresses these words to Thomas precisely because this disciple symbolizes each one of us in each one of us there is a twin we know that Jesus is the way and yet how often do we not tend to follow a different way we know that he is the truth 
And yet how often do we not wallow in falsehood? We know that in him is life. And yet, the choices we make literally bring death to ourselves and to those around us. It's like twins playing pranks on you. You catch this one, he says, no, it's the other one. But this struggle is the struggle of every mortal. And even our dear mother, admirable as she was, would not have been spared this weakness. St. Paul says, For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Who will save me from this wretched state? That is the very reason, beloved, why all of us gather around this altar this morning and join our hands in fervent prayer and intercession for our mother Beatrice Buckle. While we are confident that she will be received into the Father's house, we nonetheless continue to implore God's mercy to cleanse her from any imperfection and to open wide the gates of paradise to receive her soul. My dear family, we can only thank God as we remember our mother Beatrice Buckle. And we thank you for the care and love which you showered on Mama while she was with us. We urge you to continue to be united as one in the way that she always desired you to be. And as for you, her grandchildren, I charge you never to forget the legacy of simplicity and forthrightness that grandma symbolized. I urge you to hold fast the torch of faith and to pass it on from generation to generation. May our collective memory of grandma never fail. And may she remain immortalized in our hearts. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May the soul of Beatrice Buckle and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in perfect peace. Amen. Please, I will invite all chosen for the bidding prayers to please come to the sanctuary. Those who will be taking the bidding prayers, please come to the sanctuary. So let us pray. So let us, in faith, call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ Jesus, his son, from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and of the dead. Let our response be. country Ghana that the peace and love of God shall continue to reign
Sisters in Christ, please let's resume our seats. At this point, we are going to take the first of two offerings. And we will kindly entreat that we follow the directives of our ashes. And when we are coming, we should also remember to pick along whatever we came with. Please don't leave anything behind in your pews. Thank you.
For the preparation of the altar, we sing Catholic hymn number 59, 5, 9. sisters, that my sacrifice, yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you servant Beatrice, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that she who did not doubt your son Jesus to be a living Savior may find in him a medical judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in Him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of death might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously gather to those holy gifts we have brought to you for consecration so that they may become for the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on a night was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice said a blessing and gave to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith we proclaim your death O Lord and profess your resurrection until you come again therefore O Lord as we as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of his son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming we offer you in Thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice look we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with you, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and John Bonaventure, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you today. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Beatrice, whom you have called today from this yourself, grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform in a lowly body after the parting of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes for seeing you our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, from whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him. And in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be always with you. So peace, 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 peace.
Please, we will kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Behold him who is the resurrection in life, who assures us and has repeated it today that he is going to prepare a place for us and will come back for us. This is he who has come back for our mother. Happy are we who have been invited to his supper. It's now time for communion. We are humbly reminded that communion is only for practicing Catholics who have prepared themselves. Our first communion hymn is Catholic hymn number 285. I'll sing a hymn to Mary. continue with Catholic hymn number 283, Hail Queen of Heaven. <laughs> 